Our scripture lesson this morning for our first Sunday of Advent comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, beginning with verse 36. Hear the word of God. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it is in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming for the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the, of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we know your presence is here this day. Help us to hear what it is that you have for us as we make preparation, as we have anticipation, as we have sometimes anxiety. Lord God, help us to hear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I was reading on the news over the weekend that the numbers are already starting to pour in about this holiday shopping season, about the Black Friday sales numbers and such. And they're already predicting record-breaking sales, not so much for the in-store retailers, but record-breaking numbers for online sales this year. Beginning on Thanksgiving Day even now, we have shoppers hitting the malls and now we have the ability to just point, click, and boom, it gets delivered to our house. Thanksgiving is a time when we used to just sit around the table with our families, but now we sit around the table with our families until six o'clock. And then we are encouraged to go hit those malls because we got to get there early, we got to be ready, we got to get out there ahead of everyone else. And now we're willing to even forego our turkey coma to be able to get out there with the shoppers or at least sit down at our computer and point and click and order what we need. And don't get me wrong, I love my Amazon Prime. I love to be able to go shopping whenever I want to, to be able to order it up, and then even before I finish purchasing it, there's a knock on the door, right? I mean, <laughs> that's the beauty of Amazon Prime. Partly, all of this is possible or has been made possible because we have a hard time waiting. We have a hard time being patient. When we want something, we want it now. When we decided that we need it, we need it now. And so we do not delay our gratification. We don't wait for much of anything. And that is exactly what the congregation that Matthew was writing to, that was what they were feeling too. They were having a hard time waiting. They were a group of Jewish converts who were confident that Jesus would return in their lifetime. And they were growing impatient and they were beginning to lose faith because Jesus had not yet come again. And Matthew was retelling them 
the stories of Jesus in a way that would bolster their hope, that would restore their faith. He was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was sharing the Messiah to a group of believers, to a group of followers, to a group of converts who were living caught between the first advent of Christ and the second coming of Christ. He was writing to a group of followers, of believers, of converts who were caught, caught between the first advent of Christ, his birth in Bethlehem, his life in Palestine, his death on a cross, his resurrection. He's writing to these converts who are caught between that first advent and the second coming. They were living in the in-between times, the already but not yet times, in an era where the old is passing away and giving way to the birth of something new. Wait, that's when we're living. We are yet still those people living between that first advent and the second coming. So while Matthew was writing for a specific audience, he is writing to us as well. For Matthew, was writing about the old age passing away and yielding to the new age being born. The old age for Matthew was marked by the presence of Satan and the demons, by idolatry and sin, injustice, exploitation, sickness, and strife between nature and humankind. It was marked by violence and death. But the new age will be characterized by the complete rule of God and the angels, by authentic worship, forgiveness, mutual support, health, blessing between nature and humankind, and eternal life. Isn't that what we are looking forward to? Isn't that what we are working towards? That restoration? God is acting through His Son, Jesus Christ, to effect that change. The birth and the life and the resurrection are the first phase of transformation, and the second coming will bring it to completion. Meanwhile, Matthew's community is living in a conflict zone between the ages, and we do as well. Believers and followers and converts who are susceptible to losing faith as we grow impatient for our God to settle things once and for all, that is sometimes the mindset that we get into that God, our God, is going to settle things once and for all. The Jewish converts of Matthew's day were still under the impression that Jesus was coming to replace the oppression of the Roman government with a government of their own liking one that would oppress their enemies. That's what Matthew's community is waiting for, for the old government to pass away and for the new government to be all about them and all about their needs and their desires and their ability to oppress those who oppressed them. The people were still putting too much trust in the structures of the world and hoping that if their people oversee the structures, then it will be all good for them. But that was not what Jesus was all about. Salvation 
does not come from the government regardless of who is in charge. If 2016 gave us anything, it gave us a good dose of uncertainty. Uncertainty, surprise, unexpected events. Jesus knew that we would experience uncertainty. He knows that it's part of the human condition. We know uncertainty. Two colleagues were working. One was diagnosed with cancer, the other not. Two candidates applied for a coveted job. One was selected, the other not. Two kids were navigating their way through high school. One succumbed to drug addiction, the other not. Two couples were joined in marriage. One stayed married, the other did not. Our lives are filled with the unexpected. They are filled with the surprising and the life-altering events. And in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of that uncertainty and all of those surprises, we are invited. Actually, we are commanded to keep watch for the presence of God we know in Jesus. In the midst of the tragic events that happen in our lives, in the midst of the uncertainty that surely each of us will experience at one point or another, we are invited to look for God in Jesus Christ and those experiences. In the midst of those tragic events, so that is not easy. It's not easy to always see God in that. It's not easy to know how Christ will come alongside us in that. Sometimes we have to wait a little while to see where God is at work. And that can be painfully hard. Yet the promise throughout Scripture is that God reliably meets us at our points of greatest need and accompanies us even and especially in the most difficult of circumstances. Watching and waiting is hard most times but it is one of the main reasons we come to church together in worship on Sundays, to be watching and to be waiting with each other, to be watching and waiting while we're sometimes straining to see God at work in the ups and the downs of our lives. We come to church to hear words of encouragement read once again. Words like the prophet Isaiah that we heard earlier. We come to hear the encouragement from the scriptures. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go down from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he will judge between the nations, and he will settle disputes for many peoples, and they will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. We come here to worship. We come here to hear the words of encouragement. We come here to know that one day we won't have a section on our prayer list for those serving in the military while being deployed. 
because God is up to something that we don't know fully yet what is to come. We are also to come to church so that we are surrounded by other followers of Christ, some of whom are struggling to see God and some who have recently seen God and can share with us what they have seen. We gather to encourage one another to help each of us see God, especially in the dark and difficult times. No one knows when tragedy will strike. No one knows when incredible blessing may occur. No one knows. But we do know this. God is present. Sometimes it's hard to see, and then we need help. Sometimes it's apparent to us, and then we can help others. That's the way the body of Christ worked all those years ago when Matthew was writing his gospel, and even today now. That is the best way that the body of Christ works. Some of us will know tragedy, while others will know redemption. And we share with one another so that all might know the power and the strength of the body of Christ. We have begun the Advent season. Not yet Christmas. We want so badly to rush headlong right into Christmas. But first, we have Advent, a time and a season of preparation and anticipating, a time of waiting, a time of watching. As the old ways are passing, and we are being made ready for the birth of something new. As we wait and as we watch, we gather. And we gather in sorrow while we share joy. We gather in shame only to receive forgiveness and grace. We gather to share and receive as we build a strong body of Christ. Even Jesus himself does not and did not know the hour or the day or the time when the second coming will occur, but his entire life was about teaching us how to live in those in-between times. We are being made ready while we watch and we wait and we gather together. Amen. <laughs>